All right, this would be sequential function chart uh, programming, uh, showing it more in advanced uh, features as far as skip through, um, just you know how to how to stop everything, uh, knowing that if you break the uh, if you edit or something that you it does prompt you that it will come down here and, and like if you if you edit anything that. Normally, it, it prompts you down at the very bottom that it will start from the very, you know, very beginning, just like that just did, uh, so that you know that it will do that. And so, like say for instance, I have these timers, and the timers are set at five millise or five seconds, five hundred milliseconds. So each one of these steps has to wait till it goes to a clear or a done. And then, then it will not transition bits until that, that state. So no matter if it's transitioning bits here, it will not actually continue to the next process until the done bit is done. So if I wanted to shorten everything and make it run faster, um, I could just put it at one second. You know, come in here and throw all of them at one second. Being that I'm using the done bits, I can use the timer. And these will stage through quicker, as you see I'm starting to do right now. So, what we can do, once we get all these set, As you can see, it's staging a lot quicker now. So it, it's doing the steps. Um, it's actually going through setting all the bits. If we looked at the bits, that it would be tra I know, transitioning states and following down the path. So you could almost look at this like a state machine, um, but a sequential Basically, it's just a sequential operation. Um, to understand this a little better, um, I can actually show you the lines. Like, for instance, I'll click right here, show, um, show wire. So basically, that, that just shows you a full connection of how everything's done. Now, a lot of times, you'll, what you'll see in the programs is that they don't have the connections already. You know, that they'll hide the wire. And when they hired the wire, that's just basically so that it's more interpretable. Uh, they can show more stuff on screen. And it's easily found just by clicking right here. And that generally means 3 and D. So right here, D, 3 is D up here. And then 3 across. So it would be down here. And this is B1. So at B1, that would be shown. And then D1 would be this one. So if you just clicked right here, it automatically takes you to that point. So once it automatically takes you to that point, you, you know what, what to expect. Now let's set all these to a higher number. Set them to uh, 10 milliseconds or 10, 10 seconds, I should say. So we set all these to 10 seconds and then what we'll do is we'll show the skip through feature because now the process is a lot slower so what we're doing with timers is we're actually slowing and speeding up the process you know depending upon what you want to do um, so for instance like right here it's waiting on this done bit you know, it got done so we could actually click right here and skip through and then skip through and then skip through and the process would actually do the same thing it just wouldn't be relying on the the timer to or the the step to be done at that point because you're just saying I want it to happen quicker so I want to step through this process as quick as possible you can just right click hit step through or you can always you know force it true or force it false 
Um, I don't recommend that. Um, if you're going to do anything, just step it through. Say, for instance, you had it, something that you were wanting to control. Um, then you could just, you know, come back and control it. Uh, you, you could say, okay, well, I want it, say if this was cutting on something and this was cutting it off after it hit a certain condition and you didn't want it to stay on very long, you could just, you know, step through. Like, say, for instance, right now, step zero is waiting on the start button. So, so we know that step zero are, yeah, step zero uh, dot dn is, is finished. We know the start button is, is not, and we know that step bit dot five is zero, which is supposed to be because it's looking for a not. So if I were to actually just say, well, I don't, I'm not, I don't care about the start button or say the start button was broke or whatever the case may be, I could just simply step through it and this would continue on to the next process. Now with that continuing on to the next process, it's automatically going to run. See, if you look at this timer, well, let's look at one that's live. It's counting down. So as soon as it's done counting down, it, the done bit will come on and it will transition to the next one. And it's just like it did. So this one is counting. As soon as it's done, this will come true and then go to the next state. So simply by changing changing the timers, you could speed up or slow down the process all you want to. Um, so that's just a, another feature that they have. Uh, this was a continuation of, of the simple sequencer that I did earlier, and I just wanted to show the you know the functionality of you know a, a little bit more uh, stuff added to it, and then you know actually the skip through and, and, and features like that. Uh, and just an acknowledgement that if you do happen to add on to it, that, you know, it, it does start at the uh, very beginning. So, again, so I, the start button is still waiting on the start button because remember I skipped through. So let's just skip through again. Because again, say for instance the start button is broke then five seconds, you know, I sped up the whole process, so now everything is going to transition down. Um, and you can see the one will just keep flowing down. So bit four, this should go bit five, and then when it goes back, it'll clear. So, and now let's just let it, let it free run. So the start button's good, then bit, bit one is good. So now bit two is good. Bit three. Bit four is coming up. Bit five. And so this is how to use a simple sequencer. Um, and you know, you could use this for multiple things. You do not have to use this for, for the process that I'm using. I'm showing a simple sequencer using a step, the step transition and then letting it actually come in and, and uh, I'm using that with the condition to transition from this step to transition to this step to transition from this step to this step. Um, it's a very simple se sequence, but you can use these same bits. Say, for instance, if you wanted to control something, um, you could say whatever valve dot whatever on uh, or you can just use this very bit and cut that valve on for that set, set amount of time. But at that point, you want to be a little bit more elaborate. This is very simple. It just shows a, a sequential step. You know, this does this. If this, do this. Uh, this type scenario. Um, you know, it is it is written with a sequential function chart. So, um, you know, it, like I said, I just wanted to, to show that and also show the fact that if I were, it, <clears throat> say for instance, if I were to come in here and edit this, uh, that it will start back. You know, it, it'll come in, and generally speaking, if I'm adding to it, it'll start back at the very beginning. 
so we want to this was one so if I add it to this if I broke this for some reason then right down here it, it will say now this will cause the sequential functions chart to reset now if I hit uh, if I assemble everything it says a trend it, it cannot assemble it of course it's not going anywhere that's why I can't assemble it so let's just at attach it back real quick and again let's let's just tie it back in so it at that point it just starts back so personally like I said you're never you're never probably going to see the, the wire, but you can see it if you want to. Um, just know you have to go in edit mode to see it. Uh, at that point, you should just see the, the transition and then the, the spot that it's at. So D3, if you look at D3, it's down here. So this transition highlights down here. This transition highlights up here. So if you just click on the, the actual step right here on the very the very bottom, then it will take you to the point that it's at. So real quick, I just wanted to show that. And uh, this was just a continuation of a simple sequencer that I did earlier. And I wanted to continue on with it to show you more a little bit more functionality with a se sequential function chart. Okay, thank you. Hopefully that helped, and uh, we'll have more videos to come.